not at all thrilled with GoPro this morning. Lately. Actually, even when I try and do live streams from the mountain or whatever, I'm not really thrilled about the GoPros. Flip on my recording light here. The background noise might get bad because I might have to turn on the AC. It's it's hot down here. Not Arizona hot, but it's hot. Alrighty then. I think I'm gonna get started. I need to do anything else? No, nope, looks good. All right, welcome to Evidence Based Audio number 177. And this is uh, string tension versus spring tension. And I'm going to try and get my mic here. If anybody knows a better stand, like desktop stand, than this road one, it, it doesn't seem to be able to carry heavy enough microphones, and it just isn't all that adjustable, and it isn't all that all that robust. And usually, Rode is pretty good about that stuff. So, first of all, um, I was trying to get a keyboard sound in my Helix, and uh, thanks to Glenn DeLuna, I was able to get a pretty good organ sound, but not really thrilled. I uh, kind of wanted more of a trumpet, strings, pads kind of thing. And um, the guys on the site told me to check out Jam Origin. And they had a thing called MIDI Guitar. And um, it can run on your iPhone. And crazily enough, you can use your iPhone with the USB port uh, as an input and output. Or as, you know, effects in your effects loop if you need more plugins. Because, you know, there's audio units plugins available on Mac. Um I think audio busters. There's, there's a couple things that you can uh, that you can use with this, and uh, a couple plug-in formats. I know um, you know we're being on Juice. One of the reasons we do our plugins in Juice is because we want to make sure that we're able to um, port for these uh, other devices and everything. And uh, I was playing guitar through. I was playing piano <laughs> with my guitar, and the crazy thing is is it's doing it polyphonically like it's tracking each individual string somehow and um it's tracking better than those old midi guitar pickups and, and you know i own these things the uh, i really like the the gk or whatever the, the you know the boss's midi or roland's midi pickup i had one of those uh u-rock guitars which was uh, I know you guys are going to get mad, but it's actually better than, than I've ever tried a MIDI pickup. I tried the one, I think it's from Fishman. Um, and it was okay, but, um, you know, none of them have worked as well as, uh, as this, um, this software does. And, and I know a lot of people have been talking about polyphonic tuners and, and, we talked about them on here, and I think I might have actually gotten it wrong. If, if somebody has a bone to pick with me on how I was talking about polyphonic tuners, let me know. Also, like something like Digitex Drop, um, let me know, because uh, I'm, I'm still pretty confused on the polyphonic thing. But a few years ago, uh, maybe it was more... Um, Celimony, who makes Melodyne. Uh, if you don't know what Melodyne is, it's like a um, pitch correcting plugin. You can use it for making harmonies and changing rhythm and stuff too. It, sort of what you would use Auto Tune for. And uh, you know, I know everybody calls it Auto Tune, but they don't understand that you know the majority of the of the good work done in it is uh, in manual mode. Um, same with Melodyne. Melodyne's a little bit different, but they made something called direct note access. And, and let me just read this from you. Um, 
DNA direct node access is the technology that makes it the impossible possible by allowing individual nodes and polyphonic material for the first time to be identified and, and edited. The unique access that Melodyne has long offered to the pitch, timing, duration, and other parameters of notes and monophonic material is now extended through DNA direct node access to include notes forming parts of chords. Um, like Melodyne itself, DNA direct node access is a development that radically and forever alters the handling of audio. In the world of digital image processing, it has long been possible with the right software not only to correct depicted reality down to the smallest details, but also literally to create new worlds, images that depict with total credibility something that has never existed. DNA direct node access offers Melodyne users comparable freedom in the fields of audio. Melodyne with DNA direct node access. I'm sorry this, this sounds like an ad, but I'm just kind of reading how this works. Um, allows you to intervene in the audio and material in ways that were unthinkable before and that range from subtle enhancements to recomposition when at the beginning of 2008, DNA direct node access was first demonstrated, it created a considerable stir. A few months later, a film team visited Melodyne's inventor, Pete Neubacher, I'm not sure how you say, in his laboratory to find out more about this revolutionary technology. The results of a 14-minute interview. I guess, you know, I, I was hoping they were going to have a, a bites version of uh, what this actually is. DNA lets you take a, a guitar chord that's already recorded onto one track and um, split the individual notes apart and tune them individually. I mean, it's magic. This is stuff we thought was going to be science fiction, you know, just, just a few years ago, you know. this is, It's incredible that it works as well as it does. Um, I was extremely skeptical of it. I've, I've had to try it a few times. I would still rather somebody play their guitar in tune, but maybe that doesn't even matter later on. I know we have those, like, auto-tune guitars or whatever. Um, I was blown away when I had to use it for a little kid's, uh, choir thing. And, um, it's just magic to me. I, I, I love that, that we live in this age where we get to see this kind of magic happen to us and happen around us. And I think it's something like this that's making Jam Origins MIDI guitar work. You know, I, man, I can't believe it was 2008 when DNA came out. Jeez, it felt like yesterday. Ugh, getting old. Um, but this, this, uh, jam origin thing, this MIDI guitar, uh, it, it was in real time. And that was something about DNA where like, well, you know, it's not going to happen in real time, but you know, maybe it will. And you know, never say never, but I mean, it really felt like, um, really, really, really felt like science fiction and telling you, if you don't understand like MIDI guitars and hexaphonic pickups and things like that. Um, it, it seriously let me, um, play this thing in real time and, and, and it, it just happened. It was just absolutely incredible. So, um, I was playing piano chords and everything, and I'm sure there's better ways to do this. I've, I've seen these, uh, what is it? The Roland, there's two, two guitar synth pedals. Let me I'll just pull them up. Pedals. Um, and actually, thank you guys on the, the gear page. I know I always talk a lot of crap about TGP, but, um, they suggested this way to do this thing. So, uh, Boss has these two pedals, the SY1 and the SY200, and they're supposed to do this much, much, much better. Um, and then Moore has, a one that was like, I think it was like a hundred bucks off Amazon. Boss one's a little bit expensive for something I may not even ever need, but plugging your pedal, your phone in was pretty cool. But I, I saw I saw videos of guys like playing Van Halen Jump on these things or something. And Electro Harmonics has one like called the EH9 or Synth9. Is this one? Um, let me pull this up. 260 bucks. Uh... You know, I don't know what that is in, in 80s dollars. <laughs> so maybe maybe this isn't even expensive. But um, I think these things are polyphonic. I want to find a, a video. Here's the... I mean, I'll just play a Sweetwater video real quick. Music can now be produced entirely by electronics. Coded information is punched out. An electronic music synthesizer... Ooh, I... 
I know Sweetwater's not throttled. Is my is my internet no good? Yeah, I, I don't the want to mess with The multi-voice synth has a tone control and a four octave selector knob. Let's see the, uh, wow, why is this taking so long to load? You know, that's been crazy slow lately, and I don't know why. Yeah. That's incredible. We got a tribute band playing uh, Dio's Last in Line, so I, I wanted like a, kind of a strings, orchestra, trumpet kind of thing. This is perfect. This track also uses the mood bass and string synth. I don't know if this works better or worse than the iPhone one. Um, it's just incredible that this this kind of thing is happening right now. It's uh, really cool. Um, let's see the boss one. I know there's one where somebody was doing some kind of... What is going on with this internet? Sorry, guys. Let's check out the Sweetwater. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. This guitar, you just plug your regular guitar. Next up, we have pads. Synth basses. Guitar output is concerned. <clears throat> the biggest factor uh, really is the amount of output. You know, so it's... See, I really this polyphonic sound. Anyway, I'll stop bugging you with this. It's just incredible to me this that we're able to, you know, first it was Melodyne's DNA, which was just mind blowing, and now to think that you don't even need a MIDI pickup, and and you're uh, and you are off and away playing keyboards, and and better than it ever did with the MIDI pickup, at least whenever I tried it. All right, so next thing. Um, See if I can make this work. There we go. Welcome to my desktop. And I tried to do this with a GoPro, but man, the GoPro just really sucks. It, it, speaking of which, if you guys know a camera that I could use, uh, Scott Beanstra had some good examples. Um, I really just need a camera I can either stick on here, use it as a webcam, but it also records. So when we're doing interviews and stuff, it doesn't have to be great. Yeah, see that, that this is just the Portuguese in me. This is this is professional Velcro arm hair. So. Um, but you know, I know you guys have seen me doing a lot of guitar tech stuff lately, but you know, I'm not real, I'm not a real guitar tech really. I mean, that's how I got my start, but I mean, I've, it's, uh, I'm qualified to do some things and not others. Um, but I did order off Amazon a whole bunch of shrink wrap. Um, I can't imagine, you know, back in the studio days, a box like this, pretty sure it would have cost hundreds of dollars. So we'll see if this stuff is any good or if it, you know, maybe the heat shrink shrunk on the way here with the, uh, on the boat or whatever. Right. But I'm telling you, this stuff cost me like 30 bucks or something. It wasn't, it wasn't anything. Um, but let's take a look inside here, but, um, we're going to be doing guitar repairs here at the school. I think, um, we'll probably put a price list up soon. Um, 180 pieces of this, 140 you know, these giant ones got 40 pieces. This is so much. Like, I can't imagine how much this would have cost back in the day. This is nuts. Um, 45 millimeters, 45 millimeters. This look like the same things. Oh, 2.5 versus 2. 
Oh man, I ain't even gonna know. This this is just this is just cool though. Um, so I might need a different shrink wrap gun. I've got a giant heat gun, <clears throat> but it should be fine for you know. It's all scale, right? If you're gonna be doing this a lot, you're probably gonna do something else. Um, and this one, this was like this another thing on Amazon. It's a wiring box with uh, all the different color guitar wires I was gonna need. It came with a bunch of zip ties. It came with some shrink wrap itself. And it came with this thing, which we will see whether or not we actually want to use this. But it appears to be a cutter and a stripper. I don't think I would dare use this on any multi. Um, actually, how would you even use the cutter part of this thing? Let's uh, give it a try here. Here's some here's some white cable. Um, if anybody uses these things, let me know certainly didn't cut i think that yeah i'm not i'm not really sure how that would work let's let's see how it works as a stripper um there's not i'm gonna put it on the smallest one real quick and just pull that didn't work for crap that didn't work at all let me try this on this thing again I'm thinking of this as a stripper rather than a cutter nope didn't work for crap all right well uh Oh, that is pre-tinned wire. I am not sure how I'm going to feel about this. When I get to soldering this, I'll let you guys know. I, I usually have very bad luck with pre-tinned wire, and I, I know you shouldn't, but um, I always do. I, I could never really get it to stick the way I wanted. But for today, and the reason of this title, string tension versus spring tension... Um, and I'm really sorry that I couldn't get that and a better camera to work here because let me just see what happens if I take down this light some. This thing gonna be a little bit better. Not really, it's probably better with the light. <clears throat> sorry. So what we got here is a uh music lily. Let me just pull it up on the other screen, I guess. Um music lily. Yeah, this one's on Amazon. Uh, let me try and get my stream deck over here. I got everything all tangled up. Right monitor. So this is, uh, if you were here, you know, I'm always talking about these, you know, the problems of having a floating Floyd Rose, uh, floating tremolo. Um, I was running a floating tremolo for a, maybe a year, maybe a little bit more. My whole life I've, I've either kept them on trem setters or I've made them dive only. Um, I am not thrilled with the trem setter compared to what's out nowadays. You know, those Geldo black boxes and everything. Um, so this one is the, uh, it's Music Lily, but it's it's their version of the ESP arming adjuster. I mean, it really is what it is. Uh, here's, a, here's a better look at it. It's got, it looks like it's got a ball bearing end. Um, it's, it's like the Geldo black box. Uh, in fact, that's just, we, we may as well. Last word. So if we go to last word in tremolo stabilization, this guy's got a site that's got kind of everything. Joe Enemaker, Emma Naker, I don't know. So there's the Ibanez backstop. Let me go to the back box. So if, if you guys actually, let's, let's start at the beginning. This is probably the one, if you guys ever tried these tremolo stabilization devices, this is probably the first one you heard of. <clears throat> and very likely... Uh, the reason you don't like these things is this device. And it it, it worked for what it was. Uh, it didn't really explain very well, or maybe I just didn't understand back then. But it's real flimsy. Uh, what it what it's meant to do, let's, let's just get to this. So on a floating tremolo, um, the tremolo comes to rest when spring tension equals string tension. So that your tremolo springs back here. Um, if they're equal to the string tension, that's where your tremolo in theory stops. There's a lot of problems like binding and, you know, getting bound in the nut, which is why Floyd Rose has got lock nuts. You know, there, there's all kinds of ways, other things that modify it. But in theory, this is where it's going to stop. <clears throat> and these devices like the trem setter, they're meant to counteract that a little bit by adding a bit of force against the uh, tremolo pulling up. For instance, like if you uh, broke a 
for good intentions. Oh, I should have named it that. Thank you, Sam. Um, if the, uh, there, this has a little bit of, of counter pressure to keep it from, um, if this tremolo, if you're pulling up on it, for instance, or if a string came a little bit loose, uh, it's pushing up against this bar. So it won't, it won't, uh, go backwards. Other problem that we're dealing with, with these things is the, is the dive. Um, and in fact, I think this spring right here, man, I, I have this, I always have these so wrong. One of these moves <laughs> to stop the tremolo from diving and the other one stops it from pitching up. One of the problems you always see is when you are on a, well, let me, let me switch screens again here real quick. Sorry. Oh. If you are on a Floyd Rose, watch this bar right here. So if I, you know, this is the pitch, right? So if this bar dumps forward, the pitch is going down. Now I'm going to bend the string here and you can see the bar moving, right? So that, that's a problem that bothers some people. I, I actually got used to chasing the, uh, the note. I'm okay with it, but again, I, I, when we record these things, I would often block them down. If they weren't using the tremolo like extensively, I, you know, I would really block the crap out of them for, this is just a nightmare recording with these. And I am not happy with it floating. It's just too out of tune for me. I don't, I don't want to put, I may be playing in a band soon. <clears throat> I don't want to put my audience through that. So, uh, I'm going to, I want, I was going to lock them back down to dive only, but I, I gave one of these a try. And so the one I, sh let's, let's go back to this real quick. So for a little while, this, uh, the Geldo back box was, um, the thing, but even then it, it worked pretty good. I, I didn't really think about using it the way I should have. And so I, I've taken all of mine off of, off of these. And, uh, again, the, the way this one's going to work, it's pushing up against that bar from, 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 um, uh, backing up, but what good is it, um, you know, for the, the other direction, it needs to do both. And so there were things like this, the Ibanez backstop. We put one of these on, uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I put this on my other guitar and it wasn't this version. It was actually a brass version, which is actually looks a lot better than this, I think. And the reason I put this on was that I just saw a video with Steve Vai where he was, using this and that guy whammies the hell out of everything. So if he, if he's going to use one of these things, I'll give it a try. And so far so good. And I also have, um, well, let's see, let me look at the ESP arming adjuster. So let's take a look at this one. So this is pretty much what I've got here. Uh, this music Lily's version of this thing it might be smaller than, than the real one is. I'm not sure. Um, this looks awful small to me, but I could just be looking at it wrong. Uh, it's, this is, you know, not two of them. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the backstop, there's, you've got two devices, you've got to make them exactly equal. And I'm not sure that I needed that much. I play on eights, even though I'm playing on a seven string, I play eights. So I don't know that I need that much pressure, uh, to hold the thing. And the thing that was really bothering me was pulling up. Because right now I can finally do some pull up stuff. And um, with the double one, it was kind of a lot of a lot of tension that it added. So I'm gonna see how the single one works. So let's uh let's just get to it. Uh, this may, like I say, this may be like watching paint dry. So you don't have to, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at this device first before I do anything else. Um, so first of all, I wish I had a better camera. I'm really sorry about this. It has a ball bearing at the end, or, or it has a rounded end at the end. That Maybe it's not, doesn't seem to be a ball bearing. One of the things I was worried about was, this, is this actually a spinning ball bearing? And is it going to clank around? But no, it doesn't seem to be. Um, I wonder if there's any way I can get better, better lighting in here. This thing feels awful small, actually. I wonder if the ESP arming adjuster is bigger than this. But so the way this thing works... Let me see if I can, um, let's see if I can't zoom in on this a little bit. I, I had a GoPro, um, or actually let me, let me take a look at the other, okay, I'm full screen. Let me take a look at this one. So if I hold this up, that's a little bit better. And you gotta see my ugly face. Um, so there's a spring in here and that 
is going to push up against the tremolo bar. But what is stopping it from pulling? So, actually, so if you think about this, let me think about this right. It's normally pushing up against the bar, just the tiniest bit. You're going to have a little bit of preload. Oops, let me put that on here. Uh, pushing up against the, um, not the bar, the uh, the sustain block of the tremolo, whatever that big old thing you guys buy the giant ones of. Um, so it's going to be pressing there, and that's going to keep the tremolo from pitching up. Uh, you know, especially like if you if you bend a string and there's there's a little bit less string tension, you know, is it going to jump up there? Uh, so it's it's pushing on it at all times to try and keep it from from going up. Um, but what if you, when you, when you push down, you know, now you're into your tremolo springs. This thing has no effect on it. Once it passes the, once it, once this ball stops touching the tremolo, that's the springs that matter to this. So this is a spring here. That's going to decide how hard it is to pull up. And this thing has two different screws. And one of them, I think is going to be what I'm going to use to move the plunger in and out. Um, and then one of them is going to determine how strong the spring is. Okay. But they work together. So I got to really think about this. So if I, if I screw this all the way in, so that's the, making the springs tighter. And if I want to make this, uh, move the bar out, but keep the spring at the same time, maybe I hold this screw here. And this will set where the tremolo hits. And one of the mistakes I made, um, well, it's working fine. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a mistake. Maybe it's not. But I want to, I, I had this thing too far away. Or I, actually, I had this thing too far in. So that no matter what, it was always going to push. I think maybe I could have a little bit more space. Because this thing's got a lot of range of adjustment. So let me think about, see if somebody has an install installation uh Maybe it's even on there. Let's let's go look at it. Um, Music Lily. No name. Music Lily Arming Adjuster Instructions. Actually, I should just look up the ESP ones because they're probably. Yep. Yeah, here's a. There's some some videos here. Automotive, huh? Um, ESP, how to set up ESP arming adjuster. Let's see. Uh, there's the backstop instructions. Here's the, um, well, yeah, let's see what they say at, at gem site. Um, like the Steve by hangout. Okay. Um, self. Trick is to get it string set up. All right, so I, I need the installation instructions. Let's let's look for that real quick. SP arming adjuster install instructions. Lots of videos, but I don't really want to. Let's see. I could pretty much use the back box instructions too. Let's, uh, how to install. No, no, I don't want the video. Um, how to install the back box. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's, let's just read this. So this is going to be pretty similar. In fact, I think this is going to be exactly the same. Locate the two knurled knobs, one on the outside of the frame, adjust the position of the pusher, which will be contacting the tremolo. The other knob is inside between the ends of the frame. Adjust the pretension in the spring. Become familiar with which is which and how they work. Um, okay, so, but uh, keep in mind that the outside um, screw does uh, change the spring tension because, you know, you're, you're, you're bringing that thing in. But really, we're going to be able to loosen it a bit with the, uh, with the other knob. So, okay. Um... English translation. Uh, 
Uh, let's see if they got instructions someplace. No. All right, somebody's got to have instructions. Um, adjust the positioning knob so the rod is just flush with the knob. Just the positioning knobs. Which one is that? That is the outside one. Okay. So the threaded rod is just flush with the knob. Okay. So I've, I've done that. Um, if you have to remove springs to fit, then you get the springs. Side springs. Decide the rest position. Um, and yeah, they're going to block the tremolo. And I keep seeing this. But I'm not really sure I want to do it that way. Um but we'll try it. Let's try this this way. My my concern is is where exactly do I screw this in? Like that, I don't want to make it too far or too or, or too shallow or whatever. But let's um uh, get back to here. So let's get this guitar apart. Let's get to it. Uh, I may or may not be able to keep using the springs and the arrow configuration here. And I'm not sure that I'm going to block off the tremolo. I'll, I'll read it and see why they really do that. Let's see. Um, find a block, chunk of wood, roll a coin, stack of playing cards. Uh, let's see. To block the tremolo. You do this by inserting your spacer block between the tremolo block and the back uh, away from the neck. So... I can do that in a second. So I, I really am probably going to get some better guitar tech and tool stuff soon. I'm uh, probably going to need that. Okay. And so I definitely need a little tray where I put all the parts and screws and junk. Because now I'm going to bounce them all over the place. I'm going to lose everything. And I'm going to be really upset about that. So... What can I do about that? I don't know. Just put them here and we'll hope. How about that? It's a, it's a bad, bad idea. Okay, so with with my setup, I can definitely still put this in with the arrow. And one thing about this compared to the back box, thankfully, holy crap, thankfully, is that the screws are on the outsides. They're here. All these screw holes are on the outside of the unit. With the all the other things, but oh man, they're underneath here. You got to try and pull the spring out to put it in. It is absolutely a nightmare. But um, this one is gonna be easy. I just jinxed myself. I shouldn't have said that actually. But so the part that I really want to know is where do I put this thing? So if I if I really think about this, the furthest this bar is ever gonna move, if you're really cranking on it. So I have tons of space. Um, and I could put this anywhere, really. And is there a reason to not put it near the edge? Just in case you ever want to move it, I guess. So really, I'm just going to, I'm going to let it touch it. Maybe I shouldn't even do that. Let me make sure I'm thinking this right. So when I, if I have it here, say, and I, okay, let's say if I have it at the very end and I need to get a little bit more length, can I get it? Or no. Okay, so I do have a little bit of concern about what the length is going to be. So let me, let me put these in. Um, if I ever need to go farther... Ooh, ooh, well, here's a problem. The The finish on the inside of this guitar is nasty. Uh, there's like some, oh, man, there is, there's some varnish that wasn't, eh, I mean, you know, nobody's going to touch it down there, so they probably don't care, but get some guitar tools. I just got one of these guitar tool sets that had like a pile of files of, of questionable 
origin so but they'll be probably great for this i could use a sanding block i could just pull the springs and everything and really clean this up but i think i'm gonna be okay um oh yeah here's a nice flat flat wow wow you about want to use a router on this thing man Ooh, those are stiff. All right, I don't know what this thing is, but I'm going to use it as a as an eraser. Perfect, 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 perfect. Maybe I'll take one of these sanding sponges to it too. Yep, and this is watching paint dry. If you guys no or remember there was a uh, very popular guitar tech people would go to from all over the world that uh was in phoenix and he was notorious for being a complete peckerhead grumpy just absolutely a nightmare to deal with very short with everybody um I am probably going to try and take his place over here for that exact same thing. <laughs> so, and it seems like wherever I put this thing is going to be more than enough. Let me just hold it here. I should throw the bar in. But, how about, I'll just leave a little bit of bar so I can, let's just say we can get another. Another bit. So I'm not sure why they. So let me read this again. Strings are at the pitch. Mills in the right place. Uh, install the back box in the position so that it almost touches the trim block. Um, drill a little pilot hole. Okay, it's a position of pusher. If it's extended too far, you see the back box move and you pitch the trimmel. Okay, so I I don't know. I really wonder what I should how I should space this out. I mean, if if I ever need to move it further back than it is, which I may not. I know I'm, I know I'm I'm being crazy here. I don't really need to be this um this paranoid here. I'm going to tension this thing so that it's holding itself up. I really like this uh, ball bearing thing because it's... The other one had a... Um, like all the ones I've ever seen. They, they have like this slam into the back. And that... Uh, it's a little tricky, especially when you got a double one like that. Um, this one is uh, like a... Not a ball bearing. It's just a rounded end. But it's it's going to... looks like it's a lot nicer to deal with. And it's got a little pad. And I was actually using O-rings to try this out. But oh... Man, I'm going to lose all these screws that I need. Okay. So there's a little pad. And I think this is to keep it from slamming into the tremolo. I, I was going to use a tool dip. Um, I put Velcro in mine, I think. What did I What did I end up doing? I, I, I think I took it off and maybe I'm not using anything. And, and maybe I'm too, uh, maybe I'm too, uh, whatever, you know, the A word of a person. Um to actually use something like this because it, it is it is a little bit variable and uh i'm kind of finicky but i'm gonna put this on here and, and just see how it works so hopefully hopefully i put that far enough to the side yeah, I'm, just, I'm just eyeballing everything at this point but you know we'll be okay 
Okay, so let me might have to take this bar out. Oof. Okay, let me grab. I'm gonna grab a little drill. I'll be right back. It's... It's a big bit, so I won't need the big bits. Just bought a new thing of drill bits, too. Where did I put it? old one that's not it Oh, well, well, well. I don't want to... I don't want to hit these without a pilot hole. Screwdrivers. And here's my new drill bits. Okay, so I really need to... Um, need to make myself a um, tech bench for real. I got some ideas. Okay, I got a 16th inch bit. But man, it is close to the size of this screw. This screw is so tiny. I'm not sure I should use this bit. Um, man, they're so small. I'm almost questioning whether I really want to put a pilot hole in. God, even my tappers are too big. So. Uh, See if I can't get a bite on it. Let's just see. If it starts pushing wood around, then I'm gonna I'm gonna get worried. But I'm telling you, these screws are so small. I'm almost wondering if they're too small for this application, actually. So, anyways, let's get a good mark. I have a punch, but I have a feeling I don't really need to use it here. Um. I keep thinking about getting one of those scaler, scaler, whatever, sure claws. They look handy. Okay. This is operation. I may not have the um, dexterity anymore for this. Oh, yeah, these are tiny. It's going right in. I should just mark these. 
So am I looking at a 32nd inch for a drill bit? God, it's tiny. Let me, um, let me see if this will even go through. I'm going to pop a pilot hole in the top. I could use my punch, actually. It's even fit. It's... Ooh. What I can do. Let me take a test piece of wood here. I got a charged battery. This one's a little bit anemic. I'm really scared I'm going to snap this one. Okay, so I'm going to find a little piece of wood. I have a scrap piece of wood around here. Okay. Well, it actually has a pretty good bite. Okay, so I'm just going to pre-drill this. Now, I used to have this little kind of gum that you would put down and stuff like this. You could hold it in place. I'm gonna put this in. I'm going to tack this one in, and then we'll see where the rest will line up. Oh, time to get some magnetic screwdrivers, huh? Hopefully it's not going into a pickup, right? You never know. So that's why I'm not drilling this too deep. Oop, that went through something. Oh, that went through something. Else. Let's uh, let's take a look. Yeah, that's right where my pickup is. Let's see if uh, let's see if we still got audio after this. And I probably should have put some screws in before I kept going. It's been a while. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the AC. I'm sorry about the noise. Oh, dang nabbit. This is, like I said, this is magnetic screwdriver time. This one magnetic. I think so, but might be a sharp one. Nope, not magnetic bummer. I don't really have the eyeballs for this anymore either. And if that's gone through, I hope it bites hard enough. It's just, it's just don't feel that strong. And I dropped one right into the tremolo cavity, so we'll see if I can't get that out without too much trouble. I, I really got to get that, that gum stuff again. That makes putting in these screws and stuff pretty easy, too. I see people doing them with uh, needle nose pliers, too. That's, that's something I should need to invest in. I need some new needle nose. Yeah, this does not feel like a very solid bite. We'll see if this is going to hold up or not. Um, I've got to get this screw out without loosening it. It's like the one thing in this school still with carpet in it, so. One room, anyway. There we go. Got it. I can still do this stuff. Yeah, it's coming back to me. <laughs> yeah, it's not biting very hard. I glue this thing. But, you know, this one might be coming out, and I might be putting... I've, I've got a double one of these on order. 
And so I might be using that instead, but let's see if this is enough tension, just this one right here. Okay, so this is in um, several ways to do this. I want to make sure that I'm pre-tensioning the, um, the springs so that this is actually getting hit. And uh, well, let's, let's, just, let's just get let's get on a tuner and start figuring this out. Man, I scratched the hell out of that nice guitar. Sorry. Look. Go and plug into a tuner. Oh, speaking of which, I need a screen capturing program that can record the last 30 seconds, you know, like the NVIDIA one or the uh, Microsoft Game Bar one do. But uh, I need to capture the entire monitor, uh, not just the active window uh, for some tech support stuff. I, I know I can do it in OBS, but it's not ideal. Five. Just put Retune on here. Set for a hundred. Okay. So this thing is being pushed on, I think. Find out. I think it's being pushed on, and so it's going to make it a little bit flat. Yeah, I can hear it hit. So I can feel it hit. Now, one of the things that I want to happen is when it hits, I don't want it to keep going when I let go. And that is where that counter tension really comes in. And... I was thinking about this wrong the last time I tried this, so hopefully this will make sense this time. Okay, so these are all um, being pushed down. So let me I'm gonna look at uh, how how flat the tremolo is to the body. It looks good to me. So this is the position I want the tremolo in. Um, I'm going to have to get a little bit more pitch out of it, which is okay. So let me. I, I, I put one of these tremolo tools on my back of this neck on this guitar, but I'm not sure that I like it or love it. Um, we'll see. We'll see if it holds up. It really feels like it's going to fall out of the show. But my other ones, I don't worry about at all, but I just didn't want to screw into uh, this beautiful guitar. But then again, I knocked the chip off of it. I shouldn't even care. All right, so let me tune this. Let me get these. You know, this is a Floyd Rose Pro. It's kind of expensive, and I really don't like the feel of the fine tuners. They are bad compared to even, like, the Floyd Rose Specials and things like that. It's horrible. The original Floyd Rose I have that actually came on this guitar uh, is pretty good, but this Floyd Rose Pro feels like crap, man. Like, I, I had to have it because it's oil slick, right? There's no way I'm not getting an oil slick tremolo. But, man, it's a, it really feels junk. I'm sorry. Okay. Because this is floating, this this may be that as I'm tuning these up, the other ones are just going to fall completely apart. Nope. Okay, so this this thing's already doing something. Oh. Let me um let me do this. Sorry about that. I put it. Um, whiteboard um, capture. What is this? Okay. Here we go. Oh, but it won't show that. Oh, man. Come on. See, I have a problem that it doesn't get the... Can't get plugins. Garbage. Okay, let me... Um, I'm just going to do a right monitor with this one then. So... Sorry. Add... Uh, 
display capture. Where is the right monitor? Add display capture. Okay, sorry about that. Um, display two. And all I want is. Around and just I just oh just want the tuner. There we go. Yay. Okay, so now we got the tuner. You can see what's going on. There it goes. It's kind of in the way. Doesn't need to be anywhere near that big. There we go. Okay, perfect. Or something. Okay, so okay so now that i've pitched this thing up has it left now has it moved away from the uh the pin here and i think it has i think I think that I'm going to need to increase the spring tension just a little bit. I didn't want to do too much, so we're going to just go a little bit at a time. I want to see that it's still flat here. Um, it's it's come forward a tiny bit, but not by much. Uh, I'm going to increase the spring tension at just a tiny, tiny bit to force this thing down. Now, you could set these things up pretty stiff, so they you could just about break a tune a string and probably still stay in tune, um, especially with that double one, I'm betting. But this one, not, not quite that much, but... See how I'm a little bit higher now? When I when I lower this pitch, see I can I can feel it and hear it hitting now. When I lower this pitch, what I don't want to happen is that the spring tension is so strong that it's gonna make it rest in the wrong place. But I'm gonna drop this pitch until it's back right again. And I can always add more spring tension and I used to really overdo this and so I'm thinking that nowadays I want to be a little bit more mellow with these things it, it I just need it to, to help I don't need it to be perfect um, I need a little bit more than that but, uh, I'm not sure how this uh, the little piece of plastic I put in there for for the shock mitigation is gonna make trouble um, what I don't want to happen like I said is when I let go of it does it keep going back? And it kind of, I think it is. Um, let's see. So what what you want to see? I'm gonna lock this back up. I don't I don't think I'm gonna need to um, need to do any really coarse tuning adjustments anymore. I think this is good. You know, it's famous last words. But... Okay. So I can hear it hitting. But what I want to do is, when it hits, I don't want it to go any further. Now, it feels gross slamming into this thing when you're pu pushing and pulling. And uh, I don't think there's any way around that. That's why I'm really surprised that Steve Vai uses these things. Because he's just so fluid with his tremolo. I'm not the biggest Steve Vai, not in the world, but I really like his stuff. Um, okay, so I can I can dramatically lower this uh, spring tension here. I'm thinking about pulling the springs a little bit harder into this thing, honestly. just It feels barely on there, but let's... Uh, Let's give it a try. One thing that I'm worried about is this thing could just go turning. It's it's very loose. Like, what's to keep it from um, from just spinning out and, and changing? Because if that changes, then I'm in I'm in trouble. Like, that's going to change where the tremolo is sitting. I might have just messed it up right now. I'm not sure if, if it's staying put. So I'm thinking, are you supposed to put Loctite in here, or is there should you put a counter lock nut on here? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna loosen this spring a little bit actually, but I'm gonna try and keep the the tremolo in place. So I'm going to loosen it a lot. Oh, wait, that's way too much. Okay. Wow. 
So you can actually loosen this thing to the point where it ain't doing jack. Um, which unlike the other one. So. Well, I, I don't. I don't really don't have a problem with this this resistance of pulling up. Um, I'm not sure that it's going to be enough to keep the. Let's see if you can see this. So what has to happen here is as the tremolo bar. So I'm pushing it down, so it's it's lowering the pitch. So when I let go of this, it's going to hit that bar. And and stop from going any further, but. If the spring tension is too much or the springs right here are not enough, it's going to keep going. So I don't want, when this thing stops, I don't mind if it bounces here, but it better stop. Um, it better still be up against this color. And I'm surprised that with the spring that loose, it's actually working. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking I might want to just put a single on my other guitar. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a little bit of exercising and let's see what happens. Hello? Yes. All right, so tuning, 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 tuning. Um, hopefully it's a stay put. We'll see. I'm, I might be pulling away from the edge. A second here. I just got to send a number. This is the, the uh, caveats of doing live stuff, right? Please call Monique at. There we go. Okay, sorry. So I'm I'm just tuning this guitar right now, and I'm I'm seeing if this thing is actually moving out of where it needs to be. Like I say, the fine tuners on this Floyd Pro are bad, man. I really do not like them. Uh, this feels. Yeah. See. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to fix that or what. But yeah, the fine tuners are horrible. All right, and this thing cost me a chunk of money. I expected much better. You know, everybody's always like, don't use a imitation Floyd Rose, use an original. But you know what? I've never broken a saddle until I owned a, um, a Floyd Rose special, anyway. At least, I mean, it's an official Floyd Rose. It's made by them. Okay, so what I'm worried is that whatever tuning I just did. Um, tell you what, for now, I'm going to go real conservative and I'm going to set the spring really stiff. Um, just, just to be safe until I'm used to this thing. And even when it was really stiff, it was, it wasn't bad. But next time I'm going to put this plunger a whole lot closer. You guys see, I don't know if you can see from there, there's a good, almost half an inch of thread showing. So I could have had that thing a lot closer and not worried about it. This is this is kind of nuts actually. I'm not sure. Maybe screwing something up actually. Let's see. So with this, oh yeah, the spring is much, much more solid now. That that inspires some confidence. And and when you got it set like this, I'm telling you, the intonation is so much easier. Woo! Okay, 
it's uh You don't care about my stupid face. I'm gonna get on this tremolo here. I don't know if you can hear that knocking. Actually, not bad. Okay, so here's here's one test. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hit the low E string. Watch the tuner. I'm gonna bend the G. <laughs> so, and I don't mind too much. In fact, here's, here's a test. Okay, so this is important. So let's take a look at the tuning. Look at where the trend's going. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. So if I push it down and really let it go so you can hear that knock, okay, my E's good again, okay? So I'm going to bend. I'm going to do just do a bend, and I'm not going to bring the tremolo back. Bend, 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 bend. I'm going to climb a couple chords, and I'm going to hit the E string. See that? So... That could mean that I need a tiny bit more spring tension on here. What I but again, we don't want this to back back up though, right? So if we, if we put too much spring tension, it's going to start pulling off the the bar. Um, so far the spring is sufficient, and I've got it kind of tight. Like I said, uh, I'm going to tighten this up just a tiny bit, just to know that this is going to come back. I didn't do it by much. And again, I don't want it to turn into this really stiff tremolo that I'm not going to want to use. Right? That's, that's how I have my dive only. Like, I got them cranked on this. When you hit, I mean, I still use it, but it, it, it's, 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 not, it's not pleasant. Let's, uh, let's pop up a... Um... Up some multi effects here. All right, let's see how this works. Certainly, way the hell better than the, uh, the full floating floor, huh? Let's uh, let's take a look at this again. Though. Since I tightened the springs up, there's the dump. Let me let it go. So it's still gonna be a little bit flat to hit that bar again. So it, uh, that's how I've lived my whole life is just keep resetting the bar by hand. But uh, um, yeah, it seems good, man. This is a single one. It's a lot less tension. See if we can do the Rocky George, okay? Let's see if it'll work. It's really getting hard. I don't know how speed my does it. It's not that bad. Where's the tuning going to be now? Let's see if we can do the next step. Yeah, I don't expect anything to work very well once you pull up on the tomorrow. So I don't know why I'm not just setting the survive only. It's been a meat long machine. Just set the survive only, not worry about it at all. This is really good. Step forward. I don't know if this thing 
backed itself up. I almost think I need to put Loctite on here to keep this thing from moving. This is really dropping through the block. I don't know if that's just because I was pulling up, I'm stretching the strings, but I'm pretty far into these tuners now. Fine tuners. And your chances of uh, anything never be more than a foot away from the from the lock nut uh, allen wrenches that you need for your floyd just don't man there's no point don't do it um you always see people that with their fine tuners bottomed out and they're out of tune through the whole show just have that thing with you i, I got this thing on the back of my neck this isn't great i don't like this i really think this is going to fall out We'll see. Um, I have other ones that are really solid in there. I didn't want to screw up, uh, screw into this guitar, but I think I'm gonna because this is this one is a joke. This one is called the Shredneck. It's just not, it's not confidence inspiring, and it's I mean it's flopping all over the place at this point. Maybe if I put a piece of tape on it or something, but I should have to. But then again, having a big old neon green or yellow tape on something. Not a bad idea for live, so drop the thing on the ground. I'm just going to wrap a little bit of electrical tape on this thing and hope that it stays in better. And I'm probably just going to order the regular ones that I use that I never have problems with. I'm just going to do that. Be done with that. It's not like I ever sell my guitars. I love my guitars. That was good. call this one string tension versus spring tension right we didn't break that rule this is also spring tension and that's just a little bit of counter um i think that's good i'm gonna i'm gonna clean up and uh i'll see you guys next week